the next part of foreign exchange markets, we are going to focus on the balance of payments. So when we ask you to describe the concept balance of payments, you need to give us the following definition. It is a set of accounts that records the flow of currency that have occurred between a country and the rest of the world, usually in a period of one year. So basically, it just represents the difference between the total currency inflows and total currency outflows from a country. Here is an extract from the South African Reserve Bank's balance of payments. And you need to be able to identify your current account. You need to be able to identify your capital transfer account. We need to know the financial account. And then here at the bottom, we have our reserve account. So you need to not only be able to identify the four components of the balance of payments, but also to discuss each one of them in depth and also to do calculations with regards to your current account. Your current account represents all the sale of physical goods represented as exports, or we also look at the purchase of goods, which represents imports. Your services include things such as the transportation of passengers, goods between countries, other travel services, financial and insurance services, then also any other business professional or technical service that a country might need from other countries. Your service receipts also include the money that is spent by foreign tourists in South Africa. On the current account, gold has its own line on our balance of payments because gold plays such an important role in South Africa's economy. We are, after all, one of the biggest gold producers in the world. Then we have our primary income receipts and payments. Uh, this represents all the income earned by South African residents working in the rest of the world. This includes wages, salaries, or any other benefits, as well as dividends, profits, and other income earned from the provision of financial capital. But we also have a primary income payments, which represents the payments of salaries, dividends, etc of non-residents in South Africa. Then we have our current transfers, which refers to social security contributions and benefits or taxes that are imposed by governments and also includes private transfers of income such as gifts and charitable donations. A very important concept that you have to be able to define as well as calculate is the trade balance. In our current account, we look at the difference between our merchandise exports, which includes our gold exports, and our merchandise imports. So adding all our physical goods and gold together and subtracting all of the things that we imported gives us our trade balance. Now, if I focus on your current account, which is, an, this, like I said, is an actual extract from the balance of payments. By looking at the balance on our current account, you will see that it is negative, which means South Africa imports more than it exports. South Africa is therefore classified as a net importer. But then you will see that our trade balance is positive. And this means if we look at our physical merchandise and gold exports compared to our merchandise imports, we have a positive balance. What does all of this mean? When we evaluate the balance of our current account, we just want to establish how stable is this country's economy. A surplus indicates that a country earns more on exports than it spends on imports. This can mean one of two things. Either this country is very productive and produces such a big surplus that they can export to the rest of the world. 
or it can indicate that a country is so focused on meeting foreign demand that they export everything that they make and they don't cater for domestic demand. Your current account can also have a deficit. This means that you spend more on imports than you earn on exports. This can indicate a lack of productive potential. You can't produce everything you need and therefore you have to import what you are not producing. Or it can be an indication of high inflation. Maybe it's just too expensive to produce or purchase these goods in your own country. So you'd rather import it from other countries that can produce it at a cheaper, lower price. Production renders income and income is then used to import goods or services. What is important to remember is that once you import, import is a leakage. This means the money leaves the country from the circular flow and it can't be used for production. If there isn't production taking place, people don't earn an income. So when a country has a continuous balance of payments deficit, it's a clear indication that they are living beyond their means. Our next account that we are focusing on is our capital transfer account. Your capital transfers are offsetting transactions for the transfer of the ownership of fixed assets or any other asset by migrants from their former country to their new country of residence. So basically, people who plan on emigrating might need to sell their house, furniture, and any other movable or immovable property that they will have. And these proceeds from the sales are outflows and reflected as negative figures on the capital transfer account of the country from which the person is emigrating. Any money that comes into a country with an immigrant is an inflow and it is reflected as a positive figure on our capital transfer account. These fixed assets also include their physical money, but also grants such as funding from the UN for drought relief or when countries borrowed funds, then a country might decide to grant debt forgiveness and this is recorded here. Only your balance of your capital transfer account is shown in your balance of payments, so not the individual recordings. If it is positive, it indicates that we received more capital transfers than we paid. And if it's negative, the other way around applies. So here is an extract from the capital transfer accounts, and you will see that South Africa's is positive, meaning we receive more money from people coming to South Africa then we had money leaving because of people leaving the country. What does this mean? It just indicates how desirable people find a country as a place to live, work and reside, especially taking taxes into consideration. And it also shows the effect of immigrants and emigrants moving their assets into and out of a country. Our financial account is a little bit more complicated and it is split up into different sub accounts. In grade 12, you need only focus on your direct investments, portfolio investments and other investments. And I will look at them individually now. We record international transactions in assets and liabilities and it is shown on a net basis. This means we have already deducted our outflows from our inflows and show the difference. Our net direct investments represent transactions where the purpose of the investor was to gain control of or to manage an enterprise. That means they acquire more than 10% of the shares of the business. Usually this happens through the JSE. But then we also have net portfolio investments where the investor is basically interested in the expected financial return on the investment. And it is all investments that do not form part of net direct investments. 
Your other investments represent a residual category and included all financial transactions that is not included under a direct or a portfolio investment. Examples are trade credit, loans, currency and deposit transactions. If you are to evaluate your balance on your financial account, we want to know, do investors perceive a country as worthwhile investing in? If investors are decreasing their investment in a country, we will show a deficit on our financial account. This means South Africans bought more foreign financial assets than the amount, uh, the amount representing South African financial assets bought by the rest of the world. If investors increase their investment in a country, we will have a surplus on our financial account. It indicates an inflow of investments which exceeds the outflow of investments to the rest of the world. Now, South Africa has actually managed to ensure a surplus on our financial account. And this has gone some way towards compensating for the outflow of the current account. Some of the biggest inflows into South Africa comes from China, where the Commercial Bank of China purchased a big stake in Standard Bank, or from the UK, where Barclays purchased a big stake in APSA, and then obviously from the USA with Walmart's acquisition of our mass mart stores. Our change in reserves account focuses on foreign reserves. A central bank's forex reserves is the actual amount of foreign currency that is held on behalf of the state. And this can take on various forms of foreign currency. It can be your euro, pound, dollar, yen, many of them. So when a country exports goods or services, they receive transfers, direct or portfolio investments from the rest of the world. They are earning foreign currency. And when they pay for imports or they pay transfers, capital outflows occur when South Africans purchase foreign assets, we will lose foreign currency. And if our receipts of foreign currency exceed our payment of foreign currencies, our foreign reserves increase. But then the other way around applies as well. If receipts are less than payments, our foreign reserve decreases. Like I said, gold has its own line on our balance of payments, and this represents the gold held on behalf of the state. We also have special drawing rights. Now, this is credit from the IMF to supplement our foreign reserves. It is also important for you to know that the IMF is an institution. Uh, they were established to facilitate international trade. And if we talk about the special drawing rights, it is our claim to the credit that they extend. This will increase a country's reserves. But it is important to remember that as soon as your balance of payments improve, you will have to repay the loan to the IMF and then we're going to reverse the whole effect and we will decline the gross reserves accordingly. The South African Reserve Bank's official reserves therefore refer to foreign currency, gold reserves, government bonds or any special drawing rights and we often refer to that plainly as foreign exchange. It is better to talk about it, more accurate to refer to it as our official reserves. Like I just mentioned, your change in reserves record the changes of the Reserve Bank's reserve position from one year to the next. And what happens in the official reserve account is a response to what happened in your other three accounts. So let's say we have a deficit of 5 million rand on our current account and a surplus of 2 million on our financial account and a surplus of 1 million on our capital transfer account. The total movement that took place is 2 million flowed out. And this is our official reserve account.
What does this mean? It shows us the net effect of all transactions that occurred on the other accounts of the balance of payments. And it will indicate whether a state will have to borrow money in future if their foreign exchange reserves become too low to then actually purchase any imports. When we come back, we will look at how we correct balance of payments disequilibria.